Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where you spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Ted Bannock. And um, I don't think that we will be booting any people from this show nope <laughs> i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> ted usually i'm with you but uh yeah 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 okay that's yeah. uh that's fair that's yeah. fair that is yeah, that one i think it's always, gonna be it can't always be a winner <laughs> <laughs> no, but today's card, though, I think is a little... I don't want to say like a card is... Like, I don't know. Some, some cards can be a little controversial in the ways that people see its value. And I think that that's what today's card is going to be. So I'm going to have a quite fun discussing it. To boot. To boot. <laughs> that, that's, that's a little bit better. <laughs> if uh, if uh, Grant were here, he would be talking about the trunk of his car, right? So in the United States, it's called the trunk, but in the UK, it's called the boot. I had no idea. That's so right. um, adorable. Yeah, that's cute. Anyways, <laughs> if you want to know how to not have to listen to Ted and I, but yet still get all the card talk glory that you can, we have lots of ways for you to gauge with what we do. Um, not only do we have the pod and the in the video shows every week, but we also have the blog where you can go over to cardtalk2018.com and you can see Matt. Not see Matt, but you can read. Um, you can read Matt. What, you can read what Matt is writing about the cards. Um, he usually has a different take on the cards, and that's great because you want to you want to hear a lot of different angles about good cards and then or about any card, and then you can draw your own conclusions and things like that. He has different use cases for things. So... Uh, that's good. And then uh, we have Micah, who's over at Second Breakfast on the YouTube channel, you know, playing with all these cards for people to uh, see. He uh, usually has deck restrictions and builds decks based on those things and then plays scenarios and then posts them usually every other week um, over for us. So that's good. And Micah was also very pivotal in getting our uh, swag out this year. So Micah, um, thank you for the swag. Um, and, uh, you know, like he, uh, the swag, he, if it's too late this year to, 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 uh, to join us. But if you go to patreon.com, uh, slash car 2018, you can join us there. Like, uh, so many people in the community have, uh, that helps keep the, the lights on here at the podcast. So, um, but Ted, Hey, Hey, speaking of cards with lights in them. Um, go ahead. Tell us about the the Beather Lutes. <laughs> Today's card is Leather Boots. Oh, sorry. That was backwards there. Yeah. Uh, like be the first time. Leather Boots <laughs> reads, uh, it's a one-cost lore attachment that is traded item. It is attached to a lore or ranger character. Limit one per character. It also reads response after a location is revealed from the encounter deck. Exhaust Leather Boots to ready attached character. Yeah, because that's exactly when you want to have ready characters, right? <laughs> <laughs> Locations come off that deck and now Gimli is ready. Aluvatar. <laughs> Gimli Jeez. is ready. He's wasted on, on a sprint. He's, <sighs> Let's... He's, or let's talk about it over cards. open so <laughs> all right let's let's touch on it right so Doors so the natural sprinters the, <laughs> Go ahead. so the general argument to not play this card or people don't see the value right is if a low is if a low this readies you when the locations are revealed yeah oh yeah you, it's just perfect <laughs> because when well let, let's let's talk about this so some location the question is like, all right, if locations are revealed, why do you need ready characters? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
like boo Tss, leather boots right okay yeah it's like boots from Erebor. so let's t- it, it's all about, it's all about it's all about targets targets okay let's talk about right. the targets all right what okay so we have lore and and rangers right that's oh yeah, a, yeah 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 that's a pretty wide and which are which are amazing can you think of any <laughs> there are okay there are there's so many good targets for this uh, yeah all the lore characters plus right. your binder that's the other target your binder have you heard of a little hero called barivore <laughs> mm-hmm. have you david mm, no tell me about barivore <laughs> So Bearvor is a great target for this card. Uh, Bearvor is a hero that has the action. So she's got two willpower, which is pretty good for questing. And you could play this first turn. And then if you get a location revealed, she has an action to exhaust and pick a player to draw two cards. Seems okay. So you can always be questing with her and always, and not necessarily always be using her ability, but if you need the willpower, this doesn't suck because I've seen people like draw the cards right away and even though that can be good first turn, a lot of times first turn first turn is like the hardest. It's the hard because you have the least amount of turns <laughs> to play things and resources, and you know. Yes. And that is, that, so, yeah, and, that is. and drawing you you don't have any more resources built up or saved. So yeah, you could draw into some zero cost cards or some resource accelerating cards. It, it's it's but it's you better. can't draw and use those cards in the first turn. Because Barivor will be exhausted, and then you won't be able to quest. I guess you could use Barivor to defend, but like, <laughs> you know, you want to be able to draw those cards, use them, and then use Barivor to quest, right? Like, I mean, I don't know, you know, like that's. I know, so, I know, I, I get, know. Right, I get. Yes, like <laughs> in, in an ideal world, sure. Right, okay. But yeah, uh, and and you can do that. Are there other cards that do that better? Yes, unexpe- like unexpected courage is a much more simple solution. You know, it's a different <laughs> sphere and a cost one more, right? Right, and that's that's kind of the difference here. It's like, well, if you, if you want to play Barivor with leadership, well, this is a great way. Or if you're playing Mono Lore, this is action advantage in inside of Lore, which has its, has its own value. Um, an, another really great target for this, and then my favorite th- character to play this on is Ally Faramir. Ally Fair, which Ally Faramir? Uh, leadership Ally Faramir, also okay. from the core set. Uh, so Ally Faramir ability from leadership is you exhaust him to pick a tar player, and that player gets plus one willpower to all of their characters. So at the start of the quest phase, I can do that, and all my characters get plus one willpower, and then I flip over a card, and there's a location, I'm going to ready him. And then during the quest resolution window, I'm going to do it again. Right. Seems yeah. okay. Yeah. Plus two willpower to all my characters. It's all right. Seems all right. Seems okay. Dave. Seems okay. And I and I'm giving you a hard time, but I'm you know like I'm challenging you because <laughs> you know I know that some people in the community like it just seems every a little turn bit... I can do this <laughs> if there's a location. No, you can't do it. You can only do it on the turns where a location is revealed, right. but. You know, and it has to be a location that is revealed, not a location that is put into play. Sure. So, like, you know, like, you can't do it in those, you know, those times where it's, it's like, oh, sh- you know, sh- shuffle a location into the encounter deck and pull out another location or whatever. Um, you know, and I'm sure you have other, I'm, I'm being kind of overly <laughs> negative about this card. Um, yes. To, to That's kind the of, point of the show. Right. No, the point of the show is not to be overly negative. Um, but uh, what else? What else do you have? I mean, I have, I have two very, in my opinion, very good use cases, or three maybe. But uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that you got your chance to, <laughs> to say it. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. though those are definitely my my top picks. There are plenty of other ranger characters that also have like two willpower and then have decent stats. Um, you know, like yes, for combat, you know, it's like if you're short on willpower, it kind of mitigate. Like you can quest with them, and then you mitigate the risk of like, like oh, maybe they'll be available for combat. Right? It's not. It's not a consistent effect 
right? Or uh, this trigger is not consistent. Right. It's certainly better. It has a higher odds of triggering the more player count you have. So right. when you're going to like a convention and you're playing a lot of three and four player games, that's when I do tend to put this in my deck more often because right. I, I mean, when you're revealing four cards, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get one location and that's all you need. Um, you know, if you compare this to other similar effects, I, I suppose most people will compare it to Wingfoot. Right. Because uh, that's another one cost lore attachment that is restricted to Rangers. And right. it doesn't have to be a location. You get to choose location right. and counter effects. So, and what do you always pick when you play Wingfoot? Well, enemies. Yes, usually, you'll always pick enemies because you, that's what you want to be ready for. Unless I, you're playing the Battle of Lake Town. Well, and, <laughs> which has... Right. You know, no enemies. Odds the, are yeah. <laughs> you can get a location in Battle of Lake Town, even if you're just playing two player. Uh much better pick in that scenario. Um, so those were really my, my top two targets. There's a couple other effects um that having a ready character could do. Uh so if they are happen to be so if they're a ranger um or a a lore character that's a scout, you know, like you could have guarded ceaselessly in play. Um, you could have distant stars in your hands, which is an action where you have to exhaust a ranger or scout character. Um, so there, there's reasons to have your character ready because sometimes exhausting is a cost of a card or a cost of an encounter card effects. Um, you know, there are shadow cards that exhaust your characters. There's locations that require you to exhaust a character as part of a travel effect. Uh, those are less yeah, like common, but caught but... in the web from the from the core set, which you know your character doesn't ready in the re in the refresh phase, right? But that doesn't mean other readying effects can't ready that character, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah, it, 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 way to to get around that. Um, so, um, I have to look at other other lore well, characters, but those are so if the, you had other. The, so, what are do you have yeah. any targets? Well, Please. a couple other targets that I have used leather boots on is um, Haldir of Lorien, the hero, uh, because you don't, because Haldir triggers, not triggers, but you use Haldir when you're not engaging enemies. So it's very possible playing solo that there's going to be eight enemies in the staging area that you haven't killed yet, but you still want them to quest and then, you know, and you could get a location and then he's ready and then you can use him to attack into the staging area. Um, and because he's got two willpower. So, you know, like that's a, that's a real solo use for leather boots. Um, the other one is because it can go on characters. Again, this is the, you know, character attachment thing. Um, you know, being able to use Mirkwood Explorer. You know, being able to quest with Mirkwood Explorer, put the uh, put the progress token on him, ready him, and then maybe even get rid of the location by exhausting the Mirkwood Explorer. You know, that was just revealed can really get you out of a jam. Um, playing solo, you know, because you can build up those those resources for a lot. You know. <laughs> there and the fact that it's just can be attached to any character just kind of opens up the you know possibility of using it in a dale deck not that you're you know particularly fond of this over other attachments you know it's just well it, it, it can it's quite on, strong you know. in, in dale as well because, yeah right because then you're getting of course again but, the, the just the, it being an item right Comes and that's, own. you know, yeah. like, but it's not, it's not necessarily because it's, it readies the character. That's kind of the bonus that it does, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's just that it's a, a character attachment and you may never trigger it, but cheap character attachments are what you want in the Dale deck. So, you know, so those are the three kind of use cases, maybe in the order of importance that I have had playing solo, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, there's also quite a few lore characters that just exhaust for abilities that you can use multiple times, uh, per turn. Glaywine. Uh, Glaywine, draw a card, master of the forge, search the top five for an attachment. You could potentially be doing that twice per turn. Uh, something I've done that's kind of fun is, uh, I put it on ally bomber. 
who in certain scenarios can be quite strong. He picks a location, that location gets minus one threat, but they don't contribute their threat at all if it's underground. And <laughs> I've actually used Bomber as a messenger of the king hero. And then I will put on leather boots because then he'll be he'll be a four, he's a four threat cost messenger of the king hero. And if you're playing scenarios that are underground particularly underground right like a lot of the Hello, Dale God Ar cycle arid mithrin you know a lot caves. Of, uh, <laughs> right there's a lot in air there's a lot in arid mithrin um there's a couple standalone quests yeah. um Belaga ruins of belagos ruins of belagos is like all underground right so i i'm like i'm gonna play him as a hero and then if you location if there's one in play he makes that one be zero threat and then he gets ready when another one comes out and then he makes that one zero so he can sort of mitigate two locations completely mm -hmm. <laughs> seems okay uh that's loads of fun to do so up front you're like yeah what are some good targets with this car I, 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 warden of healing right yeah <laughs> oh location came out oh no i get to ready and heal extra this turn <laughs> how <laughs> terrible <laughs> Yeah, it's a good option in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I, I, but, I know but, at the beginning of the show I was, <laughs> you know, I, but, you know, like that's, and I kind of highlight, you know, like the difference between playing it and seeing it, right? Like, yes, you yeah. see this card and you're like, well, that's kind of dumb. But then you start playing it and I still think that it's niche, like, you know, like kind of foreshadowing my ring rating here, but, you know, like, yeah, like, it, I don't build my leather boots deck, you know, but it's definitely, you know, a solution in some cases, you know, like, yeah, readying is never bad, you know, like it may be neutral, like, you know, but it's never bad. Um, right? sure. Uh, <laughs> the other, the other point I will uh, make on this card is it's not restricted. So it can also go on. There's quite. A, there's a couple of Ent characters and heroes that this card can go on. Like this is actually a pretty. It's a pretty decent card for Treebeard because he cannot have restricted attachments. But right. Treebeard's also got very high stats, and generally you want to quest with him because his ability lends himself to questing. But he's also got high defense and attack. So if you get a location out of this, then yeah, he could ready if you have to do combat, and he can just equip this for one i don't ask me how the leather boots fit on his empty feet or <laughs> wandering ent or any of the other ends in the game right. uh but there is a cobbler out there who makes ent sized boots right. <laughs> yeah i mean i think that that tree beard is kind of the case where you know like you want tree beard to be ready for combat and you draw a location and now he's ready. And so you're not going to, so I see right. what you're saying. So like, he kind of, want... he's the, he's the reason why people may not see the value as much in leather boots, you know? Like... Right. <laughs> so he'll innately like, right. Like t to your point. Yes. There are quite a few characters, right? Like readying. If you have nothing to do with that action, right. Then, then this don't play this card. <laughs> don't put right. it on that target. Uh, and that can certainly happen when you're building locations. But right. um, since our uh, kind of goal of the show is just to give people ideas or see cards in a way they, they didn't see them. So we wanted to bring to light to some of the other targets or, or ways that this card can can be valuable. Um, and like I said, playing it on Bearvor and, and Ally Faramir have been loads and loads of fun, especially when I've triggered Faramir like, you know, three or four times. <laughs> in right. one turn uh because him having this attachment just there's other ways to ready allies and this is just one of them and i have a deck that just tries to ready him as much as possible right um and this contributes to that so um so yeah it's, i think it's one of those cards that uh our show was really all about where someone could look at it and, and dismiss it and then you know man yeah, once they actually try it like oh okay yeah i think for for one and then if I do have to discard it to some treachery or shadow effect, I'm not, I'm never too upset about losing a, a one cost attachment. 
Right. Right. It's when they're two or three, then I'm like, oh, <laughs> that it, right. that it stings a bit more. But if I paid one, I'll, you know, eh, okay. Yeah. I agree. So what about the artwork for this? I like it, man. It's got some shiny red apples. Like, yeah. I just want to reach into the card and eat the apples in this picture. I was going to say the apples are out of place. <laughs> They're almost too cartoony for the type of, you know, kind of the type uh, of artwork it is. Re- like real kind of more gritty adventuring. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like tavern and boots type yeah, of setting. I, I, I like the, I like the art, but the apples are out of place. I like so the she, apples. Okay. I think they're fitting. Well, how about them apples? So How about them apples? <laughs> oh, classic. Goodwill hunting. And I bet you Goodwill Hunting was wearing leather leather boots when when he was must have when he was good. So <laughs> uh should we ring this card? Yeah, let's ring it up. Okay. So for the people who are new to us or may not know, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary scale where we ring a card on a scale from 1 to 10 where 1 is the one card to rule them all or the, one of the best cards in the game. And a 10 is the card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. And so, uh, Ted, I think you went first last episode, so I will uh, run it this episode. And, you know, I... I think that there's a pl- I'll steal your line. I think that there's a place in the card pool for this. Yay. But I don't think it's like I don't think that this is ubiquitous. I think that this is a card that like if you're not running spirit and you need a way to ready, this just gives you an option in lore to ready things. Um, you know, besides the couple of places that I mentioned, like I, I, I typically avoid use using leather boots. Um playing solo means that you know, 80% of my decks run spirit anyways. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so, yeah. I mean, and as, as we mentioned, like, like solo, this car it has the least value mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, it goes up, up in, in play. Yeah. Form, and sure. I mean, that's a function of how many cards you're, you're revealing from the encounter deck every mm-hmm. turn, you know, like things like that. Um, plus all the other options that you have, um, even in a Hobbit deck, There's Fast Hitch, which is, you know, a lore card that just readies hobbits, you know, without all the extra stuff. And that is right. Exactly. So like like those are the examples of, you know, where this card, you know, fits into the card pool, but doesn't necessarily, you know, ring the bell for me, you know. And so um, because of that, I'm going to have to give this card like a six. You know, I like that it readies. Reading is good. Limited, just too much. You know, there's other ways to do it that I like playing solo. What about you, Ted? Sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, reading is good, so I'm going to give it a four because reading is good, and there's plenty of good targets. Um, yeah, it's, sure. It's it's conditional, like we said, and I always guarantee trigger plenty. Of, even in kind of standard mode of two player, yeah, you could easily get two treacheries or two enemies uh, in in a round instead. But when you you're playing this because you have the targets for it that we mentioned, and you know it's it's going to bring a lot of value. I think I think for 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 one. Especially the ones like Glaywine or Barivor, who are just netting you more cards anyway. So, um, uh, test it out. Give it a play. Hitch up your boots. <laughs> Hitch up your boots. Oh, and, uh, and, and give it a spin. Okay. That's my thoughts. Okay, well, there you have it. Ted, who is always right, and me, who is married to Ted and never right. So, <laughs> yes, dear. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, everybody, have a great week and join us again next week as we talk about more cards. Have a great day. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash card talk 2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or 
you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L O T R L C G on YouTube. And there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.